Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, amongst the villains in the Hair Cafe cinematic universe, the top evildoer has got to be Dr. Trash. That's because Dr. Trash is really the ultimate DHT simp in the entire universe. He refuses to accept the fact that DHT is a trash hormone in adults. He believes that if you lower your DHT levels with finasteride or dutasteride, there just has to be some bad result as a consequence of that. He just can't accept the fact that lowering DHT only has beneficial effects, like stopping hair loss or shrinking into large prostate or potentially treating acne. Yet, all Dr. Trash has to back up his claims are rodent studies that typically use super high doses of finasteride or dutasteride and cannot possibly be extrapolated to human beings. He never acknowledges that there are important interspecies differences in how these drugs affect rodents versus humans. Also, as I'll demonstrate very clearly in this video, he selectively quotes from these studies to support his own biases about these drugs. So, a very good example of a fake finasteride side effect is the notion that finasteride and dutasteride can hurt your kidneys. Like almost all the myths about finasteride and dutasteride side effects, the myth that these drugs hurt your kidneys comes from, you guessed it, Dr. Trash himself. Dr. Trash first made the claim that these drugs are bad for your kidneys in one of his most famous fear-mongering articles that I have addressed many, many times on this channel. It's this article here titled, quote, Health Risk Associated with Long-Term Finasteride and Dutasteride Use. It's time to sound the alarm." Unquote. In the article, Dr. Trash makes up a whole slew of hypothetical side effects from 5-air blocking drugs. And if you want to see a full breakdown of Dr. Trash's research, I'll link the video below where I did that. But let's just concentrate today on what he says about the effect of these drugs on the kidneys. So here's the part of the article where Dr. Trash talks about the kidneys. He starts out with a general statement claiming that androgen receptors are important for kidney function. He says specifically, quote, the physio the physiology of the kidney is mediated by agent receptors localized in the cells of most part of the nephron. Thus, agent redeprivation therapy or inhibition of androgen metabolism may affect kidney physiological function." Unquote. Well, androgens may have a role in kidney function, but the major circulating androgenic hormone in the blood is testosterone, not DHT. So just claiming that androgens affect kidney function doesn't tell us anything specific about the role of DHT in the kidney. Kidneys. But throughout this entire article, Dr. Trash continually and intentionally confounds the effects of blocking all androgens with the effects of just blocking DHT production. And these are not the same things at all. So in this whole section on the effects of 5 air blockers on kidney function, Dr. Trash quotes from a grand total of one study, reference 18, which he quotes three times. It's this reference here. If we look up the reference, it's this study here from Poland, and of course it's a rat study. So so, the authors of the study point out that male rats have a high incidence of kidney problems compared to female rats and castrated rats, which suggests that androgens do affect kidney function, but not in a good way, at least in rats. But even in human beings, there is evidence that androgens play a role in causing kidney disease. The article states, quote, An association has been shown between the male sex and a more rapid progression of kidney diseases, irrespective of blood pressure and cholesterol levels. Moreover, men exhibit a more rapid age related decline in renal function than women, and some renal diseases are clearly sex-dependent." The authors then list a number of kidney diseases that are more frequent in men than in women and conclude that, quote, testosterone is widely believed to promote progressive renal damage in males, unquote. So probably some of you chooms are wondering right now, wait a minute, it sounds like androgens affect kidney function, but the effect they have is a bad effect, not a beneficial effect. So why would finasteride be bad for the kidneys? Well, let's see what these investigators actually did in their study. In the experiment, five adult rats were given five milligrams per kilogram of finasteride daily with their food, and five other rats were just given food without finasteride. So this is a higher dose per body weight than the dose humans take, but it is not as huge of a dose as we see in some rat studies. So let's go ahead and look at the results. So sadly, after four or five months, the rats were, quote, 
terminated, unquote. Unfortunately, the drug the investigators used to terminate the rats was theopental, which the investigators apparently failed to realize actually affects sex hormone levels. However, both the finasteride rats and the control rats got theopental, so the investigators apparently felt that this wouldn't affect the results in any significant way. But I'm really not so sure, especially since the blood for the sex hormone levels was obtained from the hearts of the rats after they died. Anyways, here in this table you can see the results of the sex hormone measurements. As you can see, the results are pretty strange. DHT levels decreased in the finasteride group compared to the control group as you'd expect. However, both testosterone and estrogen levels also decreased on finasteride. This is not what you'd expect at all. If you block the metabolism of testosterone, you'd expect testosterone levels to increase. You'd also expect the excess testosterone levels to be converted by the aromatase enzyme into estrogen. So estrogen levels would also increase. What you would not expect, though, is for both testosterone and estrogen levels to decrease. In fact, in humans, testosterone levels usually do increase by about 10 to 15 percent while on finasteride. So I don't know if this was due to using theopental to terminate the rats, but I do know that any of the results of the study aren't necessarily due to decreased DHT levels because testosterone and estrogen levels also decreased. So the other results of the study were that the number of androgen receptors were decreased in the kidneys of the rats on finasteride. In addition, there was more apoptosis, which means cellular death in the finasteride-treated rats, as well as more evidence of inflammation and more fibrosis in the finasteride-treated rats. But like I said, it's impossible to blame this on just a decrease in DHT levels since testosterone and estrogen levels also decreased. The investigators recognized this even, and they were at a loss to explain it. They say, quote, In our investigation, we observed that long-lasting finasteride treatment of adult male rats caused a decline in sex hormone levels, firstly with DHT, then also testosterone and estradiol, although the level of estradiol did not change statistically significantly. These results are inconsistent with those presented in the available literature. The website of Archive Drug Label states that after finasteride administration, mean circulating levels of testosterone and estradiol were increased by approximately 15%, which is consistent with the research." Unquote. So the authors are basically admitting here that there their findings of the effects of finasteride on testosterone and estrogen levels go completely against the rest of the medical literature. Also, this study completely goes against the other research that the investigators already quoted that shows that androgens are actually bad for kidney function. So the bottom line here, Chooms, is that this study is just an outlier and there is plenty of evidence that androgens and DHT in particular may be harmful for kidney function. But of course, Dr. Trash is never going to present both sides of the story. Instead, he relies completely on this one article that looked at just five rats and he then concludes that finasteride is bad for the kidneys. So getting back to the trash article, in the discussion section of his article, he returns to his claim that lowering DHT causes kidney problems. However, he engages in a complete bait and switch here because he is no longer talking about the effects of reducing DHT on the kidneys, he is talking about androgen deprivation, which means blocking all androgens, both DHT and testosterone. So he quotes some studies where kidney problems were associated with low testosterone levels or with androgen deprivation therapy, which is often used to treat prostate cancer. Here's one of the studies. This is actually a study in humans, but it is in patients with prostate cancer who underwent androgen deprivation treatment with very powerful anti-androgens like flutabide, which is an androgen receptor blocker. In the study, patients treated with androgen blockers had an increased risk of kidney disease compared to control subjects. However, what Dr. Trash is completely ignoring here is that the investigators actually did an analysis that proves that it is the lack of testosterone, not the lack of DHT that was actually causing the kidney problems. The investigators looked at subjects who were on 5-air inhibitors like finasteride or dutasteride, and they found that 5-air inhibitors were not associated with an increased risk of acute kidney injury. So this study showed that it was the lack of testosterone and not the lack of DHT that was actually causing the kidney problems, but Dr. Trash doesn't mention that at all, which is pretty damn disingenuous of him to say at the very least. So after quoting several similar studies on the effects of complete androgen deprivation on the kidneys, which as we already established has nothing at all to do with what happens with 5-AR inhibition, Dr. Trash comes back to one final rat study. It's this one here, but this one was done in castrated rats who obviously lack both testosterone and DHT. Because of the lack of testosterone, castration caused kidney damage because a complete lack of testosterone does cause kidney damage like what we already saw in the studies of men 
and getting complete androgen deprivation therapy for prostate cancer. So when these investigators gave small doses of DHT to these castrated rats, their kidney function did improve. That makes perfect sense since DHT is an androgen and it can play the same role as testosterone when it is given exogenously in rats and humans who lack testosterone. However, when the investigators gave larger doses of DHT, the kidney function of the rats actually deteriorated. But when Dr. Trash describes this study, he disingenuously says that DHT treatment improved kidney function in these androgen-deprived castrated rats. He doesn't mention at all that higher dose DHT actually made kidney function worse. So if DHT was good for the kidneys, you would think that increasing the amount of DHT would actually improve kidney function, but in fact, the opposite occurred and Dr. Trash failed to realize it. So. I think we could probably conclude from all this that DHT is a trash hormone for the kidneys and Dr. Trash is a trash doctor. So before we get to the real human data on 5-air inhibitors and kidney function, there's one more rat study that came out right after Dr. Trash's article. It's this one here. It has the ungrammatical title of, quote, does treatment with dutasteride or finasteride has impact on renal morphology? Experimental study, unquote. Now, the investigators are from Brazil, so don't hold their bad English against them. Anyways, in the study, rats were given either dutasteride at 0.5 milligrams per kilogram per day or finasteride at 5 milligrams per kilogram per day, and they were compared to control rats. Once again, the weight-based doses are higher than human doses, but they aren't extraordinarily high like we see in some other rodent studies. After the animals were set sacrificed, their kidneys were examined. The rats being given 5-air inhibitors had evidence of kidney damage and worse kidney function compared to control rats. However, this again is just a rat study with just 8 rats in each study group and that used a relatively high dose of each drug. There is no evidence that this data is relevant to humans or that these findings would be reproducible if the study were repeated again in rats. Even the authors point this out, that the results of a study like this can't be directly extrapolated to humans. So let's get away from the rat studies for a change and finally take a look at the human data. First of all, if you do a literature search online, you will find not even a single published case report of acute kidney failure or any other kidney problems related to finasteride or dutasteride. Not one. Secondly, we have clinical data on kidney function in finasteride and dutasteride users from several large randomized control studies. For example, in the PLUS study, which stands for PROSCAR Long-Term Efficacy and Safety Study, there was no significant increase in the incidence of renal failure in subjects taking taking finasteride at 5 milligrams per day versus placebo. Keep in mind this study was done in older men with prostate problems who are much more prone to have kidney problems than younger men taking a lower dose of finasteride for hair loss. Not to mention they're using five times the standard dose that is prescribed for hair loss. But even in this group of particularly vulnerable men, finasteride did not increase the risk of kidney failure at all. In fact, Finasteride reduced the risk of retaining urine, which itself is a cause of kidney failure. It did that by decreasing the size of the prostate, which is a well-known effect of the drug. I mean, it's prescribed for that purpose after all. So if anything, finasteride can actually improve kidney function by removing the obstruction to the flow of the urine, which is an enlarged prostate that finasteride shrinks. In another large randomized trial, the Medical Therapy of Prostatic Symptoms trial, also known as the M-TOPS trial, there were no episodes of increased creatinine with finasteride at 5 milligrams per day. Creatinine, for those who don't know, it is the blood test that is used to assess kidney function. In another large study of men with benign prostatic hyperplasia, 895 men were given finasteride at 1 milligram or 5 milligrams per day versus a placebo. In the study, only one man on finasteride at 5 milligrams per day had an increase in creatinine. However, there is no real way to know for sure whether that was due to finasteride or whether it would have happened anyways. Even if this was due to finasteride though, we're talking about a very low incidence here, less than 0.2%. But again, there is no proof that this had anything to do with finasteride. As a matter of fact, there are even studies showing a beneficial effect of finasteride on kidney function. So since Dr. Trash loves to quote rat studies so much, then I think it is only fair that I get to do the same thing. For example, here's a study that looked at the effect of testosterone and finasteride on transplanted kidneys in rats. The investigators found that testosterone caused fibrosis in transplanted kidneys. However, this effect was blocked by finasteride. The authors concluded, quote, Our data suggests that dihydrotestosterone mediates the adverse effects of androgens on chronic allograft nephropathy. The inhibition of androgens improves long-term allograft outcome after kidney transplantation, unquote. So this is even more evidence that DHT 
is a trash hormone for our kidneys. So this whole notion that finasteride and dutasteride can cause kidney damage, it's all just based on a couple of very weak rodent studies that are overhyped by Dr. Trash. He is essentially trying to prove that these drugs can cause a side effect that has never actually been reported to occur in humans. There is no evidence that 5-AR blockers cause kidney problems in humans whatsoever. On the contrary, the existing evidence shows that 5-AR blockers relieve urinary obstruction caused by enlarged prostates, and this has corrected many kidney problems in men with benign prostatic hyperplasia. The evidence we have from basic research actually indicates that DHT itself can cause kidney problems. So this is yet another reason, and the already very long list of reasons, as to why DHT is a trash hormone, and that's why I'll also go ahead and link my entire video series on the subject below in the description. Okay, Jims, so that's about all I have to say about finasteride and dutasteride and kidney disease. It's really all just a bunch of fear-mongering that's being promoted by a doctor who is on the payroll of an organization that wants to get rich by suing Merck, and they're using this doctor to help build up a legal foundation based on a mountain of lies. Don't believe them, and don't let their lies deprive you of finasteride's amazing benefits, because you deserve much better than the medical misinformation that they spew. All right, Jones, so I will be back with some more preem content on upcoming treatments soon. So until then, I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you for watching. God bless.